Good morning and welcome to St. James Church live stream. I'm Fabian and I'm delighted to have you watching this service. The theme of today's talk is life in all its fullness. It's part of our broad series on the church vision, encapsulated in three words, encountering, growing and participating. We want to be a group of people that encounter God and help others to encounter Him. We want to grow as followers of Jesus and learners, and we want to learn to participate in His life. If you are joining us for the first time, a particular welcome to you. The service follows the normal Church of England structure with some songs, a time to say sorry, some readings from the Bible, a talk and some prayers. So enjoy the service and leave your comments and likes. As we prepare ourselves to meet with God and receive from Him, I invite you to say the responses, the words in bold. You might want to say them out loud or in the quietness of your heart. Where Christ walks, we will follow. Where Christ stumbles, we will stop. Where Christ cries, we will listen. Where Christ suffers, we will hurt. When Christ dies, we will bow our heads in sorrow. When Christ rises again in glory, we will share his endless joy. There is no other way. He is the only way. Thank you, Fabian. Hello, everyone. Good morning to you. I hope you're keeping safe and well wherever you are. We had a lot of people join us, not just from around Taunton, but across the country and some from around the world for our service uh, last week. So wherever you are, it's wonderful to have you with us. We're going to open our worship again this Sunday with a song, uh, another one recorded by our tech staff at an earlier service at St James's Church, and we're now going to sing Speak, O Lord, and the words will be up on the screen. Please feel that you can sing along at home. Oh Lord, to your child. 
going to have a short time of confession where we can just pause and reflect on the week that's gone and think back to those times where perhaps we haven't been at our best, where we haven't been as God calls us to be. Let's say together. Lord God, we have sinned against you, we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm now going to read the collect for this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him, who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we will now have our first reading which is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 1 through to 16. The Shepherd and His Flock I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know my father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. This is the word of the Lord. And we're going to sing again now, 
This time it's a song recorded at one of our evening services, so it's still the unmistakable sound of St James Church in Taunton, but with the sort of feel that we get from our evening song. And we're going to sing Fill This House With Your Glory. And what really struck me about this song is that at the moment the church building may be closed but the church is still very much open because the church is the people. And so the church isn't just in one building, we're in lots of places at the moment. Most of us at home and have been at home for a little while now, some of us are going out and working on the front line, either in charities or in uh, businesses that are required to keep the country going, or even members of our church who are on the front line working in hospitals and in care homes, supporting those who really need it right now. But wherever you are, you are in the house of the Lord. So let's all sing, fill this house with your glory. Fill this house with your glory, fill this house with your glory, let your presence fall upon us now. For all things are through you, and all things are to you, render heaven, send your glory down. Fill this house with your glory. Fill this house with your glory, let your presence fall upon us now. For all things are through you, and all things are to you, when the heavens send your glory down. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Jesus. Kings, we sing forevermore. Fill this house with your glory, fill this house with your glory. Let your presence fall upon us now. For all things are through you, and all things are to you, when the heavens send your glory down. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Jesus is King of kings, we sing second reading now, which is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through to 17. And after that, we'll have a short talk from Fabian. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Life in all its fullness. But 
and weeks we've explored the newly discerned vision of the Church, encapsulated in three words, encountering, growing, participating. Encountering God, growing as followers of Jesus, and participating in the life of His Spirit. We are ending our series with Jesus' famous promise that He has come to bring us life, life in all its fullness. With most lives put on hold because of the outbreak of the coronavirus, how can this promise of Jesus be experienced and lived out? According to Jesus, to live a life in all its fullness, we need to know three things. First, who to listen to. Second, why we need to listen to that person in particular. And finally, how to respond to his message. In our first reading, Jesus uses a metaphor, a picture, an image that connected with the people of his time. They were familiar with the work of a shepherd. But more importantly, they knew that God was pictured as the perfect shepherd. You might be familiar with Psalm 23. There we read, The Lord, or God, is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. He lets me lie down in fields of green grass. He leads me beside quiet waters. He gives me new strength. Not only was God pictured as a shepherd, but religious leaders were also called to be like shepherds to the nation. The spiritual guides helping normal folks to know who God is and how to live well. Now, those spiritual leaders were failing in their duties. Instead of pointing people to God, they were pointing people to themselves. Instead of bringing hope and truth and life, they had become instruments of death and destruction. Jesus compares them to foolish gatekeepers who cannot tell the difference between a thief and a shepherd. He says that there are thieves that steal, kill, and destroy. Now a thief that steals is a truism, of course, that is what he does. But a thief that kills and destroys is quite surprising. Finally, Jesus says that there are the hired hands who abandon the sheep at the first sign of danger. Jesus was not tender with the religious leader of his time, and I wonder what he would say to some of us today misguide people about God, about life, and about truth, is very serious indeed. Jesus then says something shocking. He says for guidance, for truth, for knowing the real source of life, you must listen to me. Why should we listen to Jesus instead? Well, Jesus makes extraordinary claims about himself, in our reading, Jesus claims to be the Good Shepherd, a claim associated with kings or messengers of God, but also, as we saw in Psalm 23, with God himself. Jesus claims to be the gate through which the sheep find safety, protection, and ultimately redemption. He claims to be a leader that really cares, that knows individuals by names. He claims to have an intimate knowledge with God, God whom he calls his Father. He claims that we can respond to his voice and learn to hear, it, to hear him and follow him. He claims that when we do that, we will experience real life, fullness of life. But this is a lot of claims for a man. So much so that C.S. Lewis wrote, A man who was merely a man, and said the sort of things Jesus said, would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic, or a liar, or he is indeed God with us. The Good Shepherd, who lays down his life that we might live. The gate through which we can be reconciled to God. The one who can offer us life, life in all its fullness. So how do we respond 
And the message of Easter is that Jesus is alive. And he keeps on calling people to come and experience life. If that is you and you're not sure what to do, well, leave a comment and I will respond to that. It is actually the simplest thing in the world, yet it will have the most profound impact on your life. The Bible says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Do not let this occasion pass. God is calling you to respond. And this call is also true for all Christians. Even as Christian, it's so easy to get lost. To replace Jesus with many substitutes and distractions. Do you still hear his voice? The voice of the Good Shepherd who says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced rhythms of grace. I won't let anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. As Christians, we're always in danger to work hard for God, often with wrong motives, more to build a sense of identity or importance, to prove to God that we are worthy of His love. As Christians, we are called to hear His voice, to keep company with Him, to work with Him, not for Him, to see Him acting, to learn the enforced rhythms of grace. We have an opportunity as a scattered church and as Christians limited now with what we can do to spend time with Jesus and rediscover his school, to learn to hear his voice again and to walk with him. So let's take time to pause. Let's resist the burning desire to frantically Fill our days. Let's learn again the art of tuning in to God's way of doing things. Let us now declare our faith. Our faith in God the Father who created us. Our faith in God the Son who rescued us. Our faith in God the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist, we believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? We believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're now moving to the time in our service where we're going to have some prayers. Let us pray. Ever-present God, be with us in our isolation. Be close to us in our distancing. Be healing in our sadness. Be light in our darkness. Be wisdom in our confusion. Be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar. That when the doors reopen, we may with the zeal of Pentecost inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to an emerging world.
Jesus Christ. You taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to ensure the isolated of our love and your love. separated and staying inside. We give you thanks for the signs of new life we can see around us, of trees coming into bud, of spring flowers, of birdsong and sunshine. In a time of fear about a new virus, help us to ins be inspired by your story of new life reflected in the world waking up around us. Help us to be awake to you and the new life you offer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us finish by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In a moment we'll end our service with a blessing. But before that, a few news from the church. First, a big congratulation to both Alan and Betty Partridge. On Wednesday it was Alan's 90th birthday, but on Thursday it was Alan and Betty's 65th anniversary. So congratulations to both of you. Last Friday we also remembered before God George Earl. If you want to see the service it's available online and the details are to be found on our Facebook. Please check again on your website at www.stjamesthornton.org and you will find some new information to help you with your prayer life and spiritual growth. So Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those you love, now and forever. Amen. So as a scattered church, let us love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. It was a delight to have you watch this service. Please leave a comment or your likes. And see you next week.